Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, I'm going to be building a tornado chart or a butterfly chart in Microsoft Excel. There's going to be two different versions. In this video, I'm going to cover the version where you have only positive values to deal with. So let me give you some examples. So the first one I have here is employee mix by gender. So on the y-axis, we have the different departments, so finance, logistics, and so on. And then the two colors that are being presented are representing male and female number of employees in each of those departments. So one thing you have to point uh, note here is that we have one dimension or a category, which is a department. The other one is gender. The important condition here in these type of charts is that the second dimension will only have two possible values. So male, female. And then as I have more examples here, joiners, leavers. Uh, Trump, Biden. So when you have two possible uh, values for one dimension, and then you have another dimension like a department, and your measure is, in this case, the number of employees. So if you have a measure, and if you have one dimension, and another one with two possible values, then this chart will be effective. And as I said at the beginning, this will handle any time where you have both positive values. So for example, the number of employees, it's not going to be negative. Similarly, when we have joiners and leavers, so number of employees leaving, number of employees joining in the second example here, that also cannot be negative. Let's look another one, exit poll data by demographic segment. So here the one dimension is demographic segment. The other dimension is Trump versus Biden. So who did they, um, you know, lean towards or vote for. And then the metric or the measure here is number of survey respondents. So just to recap, one metric, one dimension with any number of values and the other dimension with only two possible values, that is where these charts are going to be effective. And before we start building the chart, in this, the, let's talk about the purpose of these charts or the main objective here is, let's look at the first one. We can clearly see blue colored bars indicate the number of employees who are male. So we can see how the males are distributed between the different departments when you only look at the blue bars. Similarly, if you look at the pink bars, you can see um, you know, the number of employees, how they are distributed, how the female employees are distributed across the different departments. But now, if I want to see any specific department what is the distribution between male and female? I can do so because now the finance is in the same uh, horizontal row and I can see the number of females is 75, number of males is 90. The one downside to this chart is that it's not easy for you to compare if the differences are not that dramatic. For example, I'll, let's take a look at sales. You can clearly say, see that the sales uh, department is heavily leaning towards females, and then the logistic department is heavily leaning towards males. Uh, what this tells you is that if the difference is large enough, you can easily spot it. But if it's close enough, like for example, even um, in Zara, again, it's a fake department, uh, 60 versus 68, it's really hard for us to, um, you know, our brain to process the difference and say, you know, the blue is uh, a longer bar because it's not that big uh, compared to the pink bar. So that's the downside of this chart. Um, and let's go further and continue with this example, exit polls. This is a good way to show certain segments are leaning more towards Trump versus Biden. You can clearly see, for example, uh, the black women, 90% of them went towards Biden, only nine for Trump. Whereas if you look at um, another example here, white men, 38 for Biden, 61 for Trump. So certain segments are leaning more towards one versus the other direction. Um, in some cases, it might be a little bit closer. So white women is 44 to 55. Um, so these kind of insights can be observed um, using this chart. Which way is a certain um, you know, segment or a dimension leaning towards? Uh, that is one use case of this chart. Now, having set the context for how you can use the chart, what are the you know, requirements for using this chart? Now, let's go ahead and start building this chart step by step in Microsoft Excel. 
So as always, there are many ways to build a single type of chart, write a single formula in Microsoft Excel. There are multiple ways. So let's see one such approach to build a butterfly chart or a tornado chart in Microsoft Excel. So here's our raw data. So first thing I'm going to do is to select the data. Number of This is the department. This is the number of employees who are females, number of employees who are males. So I'm going to select and press Control T to create a table. There we go. So that's done. So we now have a table. So now the next thing what I'm going to do is create a, um, a column. I'm going to call it female. And I'm just going to do a minus of this. And I'll explain why later. But basically, we are going to create the negative value of the one of these uh, measure columns here. And the reason uh, you'll see when we build the chart, and this is why I mentioned at the beginning, this chart technique that we're going to follow will work only when you have positive values in both columns here. So male and female both have only positive values. That scenario is what I'm going to explain. I will do a separate video with another technique where we have negative, negative, and positive mixed together. I'll do all that in a separate video, but this is specifically focused on only positive values. Now, I'm going to select the department column and then press the control key and then select the male and female columns. And then I am going to go and say insert and I will do a clustered column. Um, so the clustered bar um, chart will look like this. So what I'm going to first now do is to move this um, labels to the left. Right click, format axis, and then I can move the labels to low. So this will move my labels here, the department key. That is great. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I don't want this orange and the blue bars um, to be staggered. So I'm going to right click on any of them, format data series. And now I can say do 100% overlap. Uh, and then that basically straightens that. And then the gap width, I want the, you know, the bars to be a little bit bigger um, or taller. Uh, so I'm going to make the gap this so that they become taller. So you'll see that how they look a little bit bigger because I've reduced the gap between the bars. There we go. So now it is starting to look more like a tornado shape uh, and so you can see why the chart is called that way um, and uh, so now we have these two i can click on this you know the blue um, bar set or i can go to the series options and i choose the male series I can give a different color so for example instead of the automatic color i want to do a little bit lighter blue i can do that same thing i can do for the orange um, you can go so female change the fill color to something else that you would like. Now that we have done this, now we can add data labels. Um, so you can add data labels in multiple ways. So if you select the chart outside you know, border and then go here and I say data labels, now it adds the data labels. Click on one of the series uh, labels and I can change the position uh, and again outside end is where I'm going to leave it. It works fine for this um chart type and so i'm going to leave it like this but you can change the position if you would like um, and then you can format it also so i'm going to change this to let's say blue color uh, and then i can click on the other label series and then again so sometimes depending on the data if it's hard to find uh, a way to click on them no problem you can always go to the drop down here and choose female data labels and if in case you don't have this site panel at all, let's say click on the chart, press control one, and that will open up this site panel. Okay, now let's move on to the female data labels. Click on them, and then I can change this to a different color. There we go. And I can also change the font and size of the font and so on. So I will leave it up to your description to change it according to your needs. Now, the legend, I want to move it to the top right. So when you click on the legend in the side panel, you will see the options. Uh, I'll move it to the top right, let's say, to the top. And then I will manually move it this way because I like the horizontal you know, approach. So that's great. And I can now expand the plot area a little bit bigger so we have more space. Now, I want to remove these grid lines, so I'm going to click on, you know, these vertical grid lines, and I can go and say no line, but I don't want any line. If you want a very thin line, um, still want to be able to see it, 
you're welcome to do something like this. So that's an option. So now we have built um, pretty much most of this chart, but what uh, two things that are not looking good is we show negative values. So why are we showing negative values? Because the real count is actually positive. So for that, I'm gonna click on this uh, series labels. So you can go to this female data labels. And then we are going to change what is being displayed as a label. So you'll see that the value is checked. So the value is nothing but the negative values which were used to plot the bar is what is here. But I don't want the value to be displayed. I want my own values coming from the positive, which is the original count of female employees. So now what is happening is even though um, Excel is plotting negative 75, this bar is actually negative 75, but we are displaying positive 75. So we are tricking the system in doing so, and it's fine. The only catch here is that the axis at the bottom is still negative. So we need to fix that because this doesn't look good here. So what I'm going to do is to right click here, format axis, and then here I can go to labels, actually number, and then give a different format code. So I want this to be zero, colon zero and press add and now immediately see what is done is basically what is what is happening is negative values will also be shown as positive so the negative sign is being removed because we are applying this unique format code um, so now when somebody looks at the chart you can see that on both sides you have positive on the x-axis zero to hundred zero to hundred and you can um this value will also be represented as positive because we changed the label values. So everything looks good. Uh, now, um, as I said, you can format each of these bars. You know, we changed the, you know, the color, you can put a borderline if you want and all that, uh, but that's all just formatting further according to your needs. But let's just do the chart title. So enter, um, uh, double click and then change the chart title or if you don't see one make sure that it's you know this is checked here in the plus check if it is not checked you will not see a chart title so i'm going to say department um department wise head counts by gender something like that so which is what this is representing and I can change the background and the font color. I'll move it around. Great. So now I can click on the chart. I'm going to do a border around my chart, which is a little bit darker. One point width around the corners. There we go. So now we have a butterfly chart, which um, if in case, for example, you want to sort it based on the maximum number of male, um, so you could do, you know, this way. So where 90, 74, you can see that now it's sorted based on the blue bars, which are male employees. And we could do the other way. We can just do uh, based on females. And now you'll see that this is based on this. So this is one of the benefits of creating this as a table at, in our first step, instead of using just a set of range of values. By creating it into a table, now I can sort it. Oh, I can also sort it based on the department if I would like. So this gives you a lot of flexibility and uh, you know you don't have to do a lot of work every time when the data changes. All you have to do is update the numbers and the chart will update and it's very easy to work with. So that's um, everything in this video. As I said, my next video, I'll cover the scenario where if you have a negative value on one side and then the positive value on the other side in your data, how can you do it? So I'll cover that. Uh, it'll be the tornado chart with negative values as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any suggestions, please do. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.